Hello, my name is Collection Connoisseur. I collect digital thingamabobs in video games, and today I'm playing Monster Train. This time on Monster Train, we will be playing as the Awoken. No, 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 no. The Awoken as our primary clan, with the Hellhorned as our secondary clan. This clan combination we haven't played in a standard run since my second ever run in the game. Episode 2 was when we last did this with a standard run. When we did that, we did the primary Awoken, that's all we had at that time. So let's do the Exiled Awoken Champion. Now, should we also do Exiled with the Hellhorned? I do really like the Torch, but I think I'm going to go Queen Zimpling. Let's do Exiled Exiled. And we are on Covenant rank 22. Let's get started. Ooh, I got Glimmer in my starting deck. That's really nice. I like that kind of a lot. We also got Awake, which is a very interesting one. It is a big heal, and I do like the big heal. Glimmer is a little heal. I don't know if I care for the Welder Helpers. We have Seraph the Temperant. Seraph the Temperant saps enemy units. Seraph the Temperant has been a problem for me in the past. Let's try to defeat Seraph the Temperant this time. Hallows the Architect. Enemy units enter with armor 5. And she pushes units back. The pushing back is annoying. And then Fell the Wings of Light has a scouring crest. Adding Scourge cards to my hand and deck. Okay, I don't know that I build my deck any differently for those particular bosses. So let's just try to build a deck that can handle whatever comes. Let's do the champion upgrade first. So I do really like Thorn Lord for Wildenton because that encant is really nice and the three sting spells is huge. Otherwise the predator has quick and Grants quick to everybody else in the same floor as the Thorn Lord. I think I really like the Sting spells. Let's do Wildenton. Uh, well, they're both Wildenton. Let's do Thorn Lord, I think. Although, have we ever done Predator? I don't know if we've ever done Predator, and that kind of makes me want to change my mind. Maybe we should do Predator because we've never done it. Okay, fine. Predator, because I think we may have never done it. Gain an artifact. So, Petrified Crucible is good for spikes. Spikes is not great if we are enchanting quick. Winged Steel is very good, especially if we had chosen the other one, the Thorn Lord, because we'd have drawn even more cards. But still, Winged Steel is pretty good. We draw extra cards hopefully every turn. And I never take those Divine Boons at the beginning. I never looked at my deck. Let's look at my deck now. So we've got Wildenton and Awake. We've got the Glimmers, which I think are great. The five Queen's Impling are whatever. The Root Seeds are whatever. Better because we've got Quick on our champion. The Train Stewards are terrible. I don't know if I like the Welder Helpers. We have a lot of units we want to remove. I do, of course, want to turn on the armor emblem. Turn on the first trial. That's my way. So, should we set up... Where should we set up? Wildenton gives quick to the units that are with him. Which are going to be basically nothing. I mean... None of the other units really do much of anything. I think that means we set up on floor two. Let's set up on floor two and just play a bunch of root seeds. Right? I mean, you're a problem, granted. Maybe we should play a Queen's Impling to deal 10 damage here. Let's do that. Deal 10 damage there, play two root seeds here. Could play another Queen's Impling. 
to do another 10 damage, and one of them would survive. Is that good? You know, I don't want the Queen's Implants. Let's, let's play them. So Wildenton is going to kill that front one. The Glimmer can take out the Collector, which is amazing. We should do that. So Glimmer takes out the Collector. We are going to kill that one, no problem. However, what else do we do? Because this one is making it to the top as it currently goes. In fact, what do we do? I honestly don't know what we do. I think we want to play a Welder Helper. In the middle? What else do we play in the middle? I guess a Welder Helper. <laughs> and I think I want it to be in the back. Is that true? No, that's not true. I was thinking in the back because Wildenton has quick, so maybe he kills the front unit, and Welder Helper could eventually be good enough to kill the back unit, but that's never going to happen. So let's put the Welder Helper there. And then I want to be able to kill you next turn, which is unlikely unless I play a Train Steward at the top. So I think we're playing a Train Steward at the top. I'm glad we drew that dead weight. Best thing to draw in that circumstance. Alright, we've got only two Ember to work with. We want to kill this one before it gets to the Pyre. That would be playing another Train Steward up here. We want to Glimmer in the center. Because Glimmer puts some damage on the back units. It does more than Root Seeds does, right? I honestly don't know. I feel like we're not doing well. This first one is not going well. Also, taking the Ember Drain every turn is not great either. I, I guess we play Glimmer because I, I have trouble imagining what's better than Glimmer right, right there. All right. I don't know that we have trouble with the boss. I don't know that we have trouble with the boss. We may, we may not. I guess we'll find out. We do have trouble with all of the rest of the units, though. We could play a Queen's Impling there. And it might be the best thing that we can play. Wow. Play the Queen's Impling. We still don't kill you, but at least you die in one hit from the from the pyre. That's so sad. All right. I think this one went very poorly. We take 12 damage. Ouch. Can we defeat you? We're dealing 97. We can play three root seeds, which does do a lot, but we can't do anything to the back unit. And that is a problem. So 121 to the boss. I think the boss is going to die from the fire. So is there a way for us to do something here? The Queen's Impling is not bad. The Welder Helper allows us to withstand some attacks. And then we could do something else. <laughs> All right, let's start with those two. So the Queen's Impling and the Welder Helper. That means we're doing 19. If we play a Root Seeds, do we win? We don't. <laughs> All right, taking 10 more damage. That was a terrible first battle. Terrible first battle. Let's hope we can do better than that. 22 damage taken. The Edge Prior. I don't... I can't imagine why you want that. 
The sacrifice ability is not bad, though. The sacrifice ability is not bad. But I, I have a hard time imagining that you have enough healing spells that the edge prior is actually very good. I think we want the vine grasp. I'm tempted to take the edge prior because we've never played with it. It does make the glimmers free for what that's worth. Okay, fine. You know what? This is going to be, we've never played with it, let's try it. These are not the things we want. I mean, Ritual of Battle is probably good, because the Ritual of Battle makes our quick units have a whole lot more attack. Okay, fine. Ritual of Battle. And then, we need something. The Thorned Hollow does not fit with our champion. Animus of Speed already has Quick, which is unhelpful when our champion adds Quick. So is it just the Steelworker then? Steelworker... Steelworker is fine, but that's about all I can say, is the Steelworker is fine. It heals units for five every turn. But we can only have a couple units. All right, fine. Steelworker, we're taking the Steelworker. And I have a hard time imagining how we're going to do in this one. Let's go for an Awoken Banner. And a Merchant of Steel, I think. The Merchant of Magic would be very nice. Because I want to upgrade the Glimmers. But I think we kind of need a Merchant of Steel for the Steelworker and the Edge Prior if they're going to do anything. And whatever this unit is. Let's do this. We're focusing heavily on units this time. The Merchant of Steel has an Immortal Stone. That might change what we pick. Huh, interesting. Immortal Stone. <laughs> Revenge, gain one Ember. Do we want that? We've never played with it, again. We've never played with it. But is it worthwhile? Revenge, gain one Ember. It kind of goes with the edge prior because that unit takes damage and then we heal it. But it takes up three space. Three space, it costs two to play. I mean, I guess you get refunded the two over time. Wilting Sapwood. You know, this is going to be another one where we've never played with it. Let's try it. <laughs> but I don't think this run is going to go very well because we're just trying new things. We're not doing things that I think are necessarily good. Cursed Vines is pretty nice. That's a Vine Grasp spell every turn. Volatile Gauge is interesting. We don't have any spikes for the Gnarled Root. I think we take Cursed Vines. And then... Immortal Stone? On somebody? <laughs> I guess it goes on a Queen Zimpling, but the Queen Zimpling isn't that great. It kind of goes on the Impling units, but the Impling units don't do much for us currently. We could put it on the Wilting Sapwood. It would be at least interesting on the Wilting Sapwood. Would it be good? I'm not sure about that. I think that we might want to make our Wilting Sapwood do more. And I think that's going to be Immortal Stone. <laughs> and Thornstone? And the idea here is that we we play Sapwood, the Wilting Sapwood, at the bottom, and it essentially gets hit two or three times, gives us a whole bunch of Ember for next turn, and kills some things with spikes. And then because it has the Immortal Stone in it, we draw it and we get to do that again next turn. So it basically generates an Ember for us every turn, and it kills things that spikes three kills. That's the idea. 
is that an idea that does anything? That accomplishes good things? I don't know. But there's my idea. Let's see if that idea does anything. Non-boss enemy units get plus four attack. That's not too bad with the things that we have here. The conduit infiltrator is annoying, but I think we turn this on. I don't know if I want a unit. <laughs> that's, a, that's a question maybe I should have asked myself. Do I even want a unit if I got a unit? I'm not sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the wilting sapwood at the bottom. And then we're going to play Wildenton at the top. Wildenton has Quick, and the idea is we're going to try to make Wildenton stronger with Root Seeds. The Vine Grasp can make it so that one of these units dies. I guess we kill one of them, so you survive a little bit longer. Do we want to put a Train Steward behind you? No, we want to play Root Seeds. We want our champion to get stronger. So now we kill those three, and we get three additional Ember. Do we play Steelworker at the bottom? I think we do play Steelworker at the bottom. So we play Steelworker at the bottom. We want... We want this unit not to die. Well, I don't care if the Wilting Sapwood dies. We don't want the steel worker to die. The vine grasp definitely helps with that. Let's vine grasp. Actually, we could just glimmer. Let's glimmer. It kind of kills everything, which is not exactly what I wanted. Let's just kill everything. And two root seeds there. The idea is that you're going to get big and strong. What do we put with you, though? We do want to put a unit with you. But what unit do we want to put with you? Maybe we want to put a couple of welder helpers with you. That's probably the answer. Two welder helpers go at the top, in theory. I think I should have played my train steward in the center. Ho-ho, two Welder Helpers. However, we got the Ritual of Battle, which I think is very important for Wildenton. I think we play the rit Ritual of Battle this turn. And that means we don't play anything else, but, you know, we've got some turns. We can play Awake, which would make this unit survive a lot longer and therefore give us more more ember for next turn. I like that. So awake you, vine grasp you. We are not winning, but we're actually dealing most of the damage to the boss this turn. And our wilting sapwood never died. Well, until now. Okay, then we play the wilting sapwood and the wilting sapwood wins. <laughs> All right, well, you know, the plan works so far. But I don't know that that makes it a good plan. <laughs> I do want the Sting. Do I want Restoration Detonation more? Restoration Detonation works well if our unit actually survives, if our Wilting Sapwood lives. I don't know if it does. The Steel Enhancer is good. I think we take the Sting. It's a basic card, but I think we take it. Do I want Hidden Passage? So Hidden Passage actually works rather well with our champion, because we can Hidden Passage units to be on the same floor as our champion. Even though our champion takes up so much space. Huh. Hidden Passage. For that reason, I really want the Husk Hermit, because the Husk Hermit having Quick and Sweep is huge. Quick and Sweep can be amazing. All right. And then at this point, we really want to remove units, not add them. Do we want to duplicate something? Is there anything worth duplicating in our deck? No. 
Definitely not. We have not upgraded these things enough to care about duplicating. So not the left. We're going... or not the right. We're going to the left. And I don't really want another unit necessarily. Eternal Stone doesn't go on anything. Surge Stone could go on Glimmer, and that's it. I mean, it could go on Sting or Awake, granted, but I don't really want it on either of those. Do we want it on a Glimmer? That means we play less Glimmers as the battle goes on. Maybe. Maybe. Let's... Let's do the Awoken Banner and then that. Okay. So, Animus of the Will... Animus of the Will is good. It has Multi-Strike 2. If you add Quick to that, it's pretty nice. It's also good because we have a lot of things that add attack to our units. Does that mean we take another unit? Because it works so well with what we have? Maybe. Maybe. How many units do we want? Basically, I don't want the Edge Prior anymore. And maybe that means what we do is we sacrifice the Edge Prior. We sacrifice the Edge Prior and add it to Wilting Sapwood or Steelworker. I think we're going to sacrifice the Edge Prior. I'm going to take the Animus of Will. And then probably regret my decision later. <laughs> Let's go to the Concealed Caverns and see what we can do. Ho oh, ho! Oh. I definitely want to do this. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what is this? You see the tent before, you see the winged hiding near it. You prepare for a fight. Mercy, please, I mean no harm. I was left here by my so-called people. Ah, traitors, all of them. And they didn't even leave me with anything to defend myself. The Gaul. Turns out this fight isn't as clear as we once thought. Perhaps you Hellborn can prove more generous than our friends above. I promise to give, give it back to you later, in perfect condition. Do you leave the winged some aid? Oh, man. I've never seen this one before. I really do want to do this. And I think we do the Helping Hand, Purge a Unit, get an upgraded version later. And I think that's either going to be Husk Hermit, Animus of Will, or Steel Worker. Let's do the Husk Hermit. I want to see what the, what the upgraded version of the Husk Hermit comes back to be. Thank you, Hellborn. I won't forget this kindness, truly, and unlike my feathered compatriots, I will keep my word. Alright. New event that I've never seen before. That's crazy. How many events in this game have I never seen before? I want to purge a card. Let's start there. Let's purge a train steward. I think the train stewards are better for purging than the queen's implings. But barely? Barely. We will do the Ember Stone. Do we do a Surge Stone? Surge Stone on Glimmer? I think I want to do the Surge Stone on Glimmer, so let's do it. It means one Glimmer consumes itself. Ember Stone on... Ritual of Battle? Emberstone on Ritual of Battle. Okay. Let's move on. And I don't know how this is going to go. We've done very weird things. But we have very few pack shards. We got our unit to put at the bottom. That's wonderful. Let's start there. So Wilting Sapwood goes at the bottom doesn't kill things because you added armor to everything. Very sad. But we can 
we can bring something to the front to kill it with the vine grasp. I want to do that. I also want to play Animus of Will with Wildenton. And I think we put that at the top. You are attacking every turn. Who would we like behind? Well, the Animus of Will is going to end up in front if we do that. It's unfortunate, but I think it's going to end up in front then. <laughs> I don't really like that, but, you know, let's do it. So, Animus of Will goes in the back. We got the Glimmer that destroys everything, the one with the Surge Stone, but we can't play it. The Vine Grasp, we probably should have played the Vine Grasp first, just to see what we drew. In any event, I think we kill this one. Sure. That means we can Vine Grasp the back one next turn, and it would die. We could play this Glimmer. We have four Ember. We really want the Steelworker to end up going to the top, so maybe we play the Steelworker in the center, rather than the bottom. This Vine Grasp certainly kills this one. It's just too useful killing that one. You... you are the most annoying thing here, aren't you? You are very annoying. And I don't know how we deal with you. But the Steelworker goes here. I think we put the Queen's Impling in front of it. We could put the Train Steward in front because they're going, to, they're going to kill this one no problem, right? So if we put the Train Steward in front, the Train Steward dies, and our Steelworker takes no damage. The Edge Prior, interesting. So we could play the Edge Prior and then play the Glimmer at the bottom. You know, let's do it. it takes away that Spell Shield, which is good. And then Root Seeds, of course, on you. And then we hope that Telos does not destroy you, because Telos could kill you. Everything else, the fact that you're quick means that you take it out, but Talos could kill you. All right, so Talos is going to push you back, which means the Edge Prior is going to be in front. That's kind of annoying. Vinegrass could kill this one. We want to Hidden Passage you this turn. Okay, let's start there. Hidden Passage you. You got an encant value. It's unfortunate. So now all of those units are quick. Anything else we want to Hidden Passage? Not, not much. We could add Awake to you. It would only cost two. We could do a Queen's Impling down here. It would die. But what else do we do with Queen's Implings? I think we do the Awake. And I think we do the Vine Grasp, Vine Grasp to kill this one. And then we've got two Queen's Implings and a Train Steward, all of which we don't really want in the deck. I think we do Root Seeds on you. Is Talos going to come to the top next turn? If Talos comes to the top, which I think she is going to do, she does 8 damage, which means our Animus of the Will dies, even though it gets the armor 5. And there is nothing we can do about that. There's nothing we can do about that. So let's stop upgrading the Animus of the Will, because we know it's going to die. It's sad that it dies, but we know it's going to die. Let's start... Root Seeds you, because you're in the back. Okay, well, unfortunate. Unfortunate that our, our unit at the top is going to die, even though it has quick... Actually, it was going to die from this. No, this one only deals 5 damage. 
we also don't kill everything with our quick abilities, do we? Because we didn't upgrade you. We can do that because we can sting and we can vine grasp. If we vine grasp this one, then we kill everything no problem. And why are you getting plus 10? You're getting plus 10 because the trusted priest is healing you. Basically, our animus of the will is dying. And there's nothing we can do to stop that. So the next question is, what do we do instead? I think we play... We don't actually want the Welder Helpers here. <laughs> because we, we want you to take damage. We do want you to take damage, so we'll let the Edge Prior die. Do we play a Queen's Impling down there? Maybe. I think one of the things that we do is we play Welder Helpers in the center. Fine Grasp. Deal 3 damage, move that unit to the front. We can do that on our own units. Oh. Okay, so we could move one of our own units to the front. And keep you around. I really like that. Let's deal three damage to one of our own units. And I think it's going to be you. Ha <laughs> ho! Alright, that was cool. Now, now we can root seeds you. And we can sting this guy. That kills everything up there. Then we can Root Seeds you again. And then... Because we get the Vine Grasp every turn, we can counteract Talos the Architect. I like that a lot. That's so cool. I think we are going to play the Queen Zimpling down here. So Queen Zimpling here... Let's have it die, too. And then we play both Welder Helpers here. And we want one of them to end up going to the top. So, Welder Helper, Welder Helper. That one is going to go to the top. Let's put a Train Steward in front of it so that it goes to the top with all of its armor. Alright, cool. I mean, our unit is in the front again. But we can change that with Vine Grasp again, if we need to. So we don't have much Ember this turn because you didn't get attacked last turn. We can do the Glimmer. Glimmer does a lot. We could do the Glimmer in the center. We do want to Hidden Passage you. Let's start with that. Hidden Passage you. And then we Glimmer in the center. We really want to play these Root Seeds. And we we would prefer to Vine Grasp the Welder Helper to the front. Vine Grasp the Welder Helper to the front. Do we need to do that this turn? We don't need to do that this turn. Is it still fine to do this turn? Yeah, sure. Let's do it this turn. Okay. I like what's going on here. I think that the Vine Grasp on our own units is the key to this battle. And I'm glad that I discovered the key to this battle before the battle was over. Alright, now we've got Ember, which is good, because we can do a Ritual of Battle on you which is kind of huge. Kind of huge. We actually want you to be in the back, and one of the ways to do that is just vine grasp our own units to the front every turn. In that case, <laughs> yeah, let's do that. So vine grasp Wildenton to the front. We can play Awake on something. We could play Awake on you. Or we could play it on Wildenton. Or we could not play it and play Root Seeds. I think I'd rather play the Root Seeds. So let's play the Root Seeds on you. 
and Queen's Impling at the bottom. All right, we're doing 42 damage to the boss. You know that the bottom is not the important place. It's when the boss gets to the top that things really happen. Also, we can replay that unit. Let's replay it. We have seven Ember. We are going to Vine Grasp you to the front this turn so that our big unit is in the back. Let's Root Seeds it. We can Glimmer. We can Root Seeds again. Root Seeds every turn. That's what I say. Sting you. Sting the boss. Let's play the Glimmer at the top because it restores health. And then I think we play a Queen's Impling here. All right. Boss is taking a good amount of damage, and then it gets obliterated up here. It doesn't even kill our front unit. And we could play Ritual of Battle and make it so that our front unit takes less damage. All right. How about that? I don't really fully understand why this deck is working. I know that I built the deck, but I don't fully understand why it's working so far. One Horned Tome is bad? I think it's bad. Adding Multi-Strike 1 is good, but like I've said many times with One Horned Tome, the fragile means that if a unit has, if an enemy unit has spikes, then this causes your own unit to die. And that's terrible. That makes it so that it's not an upgrade, even though you added the Multi-Strike 1. Granted, if we can add lots of armor to our units, then I think the Fragile doesn't take effect until the armor is gone. But right now we have one... I guess we've got a couple ways to add armor, but we can't reliably add armor to the units that really need it, right? I don't know, I think it's bad. If I think it's bad, should I not take it? <laughs> Usually you'd think that's the way. If you think something is bad, you don't take it. You know what? We're not taking it. Are we taking Reinforce, though? Double the amount of armor on a unit. It could be quite nice. Especially with the two, the two Imp units in our deck. The Welder Helpers. But also, do we care? I'm not sure that we care. Last Stand is also potentially good. I don't want any of these. Let's skip. I don't want any of these. Definitely don't want these. The Demon Fiend, you know it's nice and all. It would be good to have. We can kind of... We can kind of afford the Four Ember. But also, I kind of don't want it. Let's skip it. Do we want Light of Seraph? I think it's a lot worse when we have the Ascend card in our deck. The Fell's Remorse is a lot worse with the with the big immortal unit that we have. I guess we take Herzl's Compound. And I really want to remove cards. I also want a free artifact, granted, but I want to remove cards. Let's go over here and remove cards. The first thing I want to do is see what the upgrade to our champion does. Gives multi-strike. You know what? I think, I think we've seen this before. Also, we could have Sweep. Ooh, we could have Sweep on our champion. And it would be quick. I kind of like that. I also kind of like the Multi-Strike 1, of course. But what if our champion had Quick and Sweep? That would be interesting, wouldn't it? I think it would. Let's take Strangler. Quick and Sweep. Quick and Sweep is a great combination. Now, what's in the Divine Temple? A Twin Stone. What would we like to have Spell Chain? The Sting? You know, the Sting having Spell Chain is not bad. It's not bad. It basically means that we pay one to draw an extra one every turn. 
the hidden passage having twin stone is not what we want. We kind of want it to have a keep stone. We want it, it to have holdover so we can push a bunch of units up in a row. But having twin stone is not what we want, I don't think. So maybe no twin stone. Maybe a purge stone, though. Because we could purge... We could purge our root seeds. Maybe. We could engage Pact, get rid of the edge prior, and attach it to the Wilting Sapwood. It is what I wanted to do. I think I am going to do that. So we're going to engage Pact, sacrifice the edge prior. What does it do again? Plus five and resolve, restore five to health the friendly units. I like it. Let's sacrifice it. And we're going to put that on our immortal unit that gets benefit out of the five health and the heal. Nice. All right, that unit is fully upgraded. We also got some pack shards, which can be good. Let's look at the Hellhorn unit. I definitely do not want these. Skip. Merchant of Steel. The Speed Stone really doesn't help us. The Fury Stone is amazing. Fury Stone on Animus of Will. I think that's very good. And we might as well put the Heart Stone on the Animus of Will so that it has more than three health. Definitely. Okay, that was pretty good. No sense in re-rolling because we have zero money after we re-roll. Let's remove two more train stewards. Or actually, I'm going to do one train steward and one queen zimpling. No, the train stewards take two space. They're terrible. Okay, let's move on. I wonder when we get our, our upgraded unit back, our sweep unit. The Ancient Hate, Spell Shield 2. Of all of the decks that I've built... I think this one relies on spell damage the least. It does mean that the Clipped Conduit Granting Haste... Oh, yeah, the Clipped Conduit Granting Haste, it will basically always cause them to move up, because with two spell shield we can't really kill it. Except that we've got the Vine Grasp, so we can pull it to the front and kill it. You know, the Ancient Hate is awesome. It does almost nothing. All right. Let's see if we draw the right cards, though. We did draw our Wilting Sapwood, which we definitely wanted. Put that at the bottom. Now both of those die. Which means... I guess we play Wildenton at the top. Do we want the Steelworker in front of it? I don't know. We definitely want to play the Steelworker. Do we want it in front? Sure. They're gonna all have Quick. It's very meaningless which one is in front. And let's deal three damage to you. Let's take off one of your spell shields. Just in case that matters. And we're gonna have a bunch of Ember this next turn. Even though we had the Ember Drain, we've got a bunch of Ember. Which is good because we've got we've got the Animus of the Will and a Ritual of Battle. We do not have Hidden Passage. That's important because we want the Animus of Will to go up. And in order to do it to make it go up, we have to play it in the center this turn. Which I think we will do. We want you to die. In order to make you die, we basically just have to Vine Grasp you, right? You've got one damage shield and two spell shield. What? It, how does that work? <laughs> if we hit you with this, does, does it cause the damage shield or the spell shield to go away? I assume the spell shield. Yeah, okay. But now you die, so all is good. We are going to play the Animus of Will here. It will take some damage because of your spikes. 
glad I added 25 health to it. We are going to play a Ritual of Battle on it so that it does tons of damage. And we're going to play the Glimmer there because that kills the Collector, which is important to me. Okay, do we play a Welder Helper here and add, add some armor to our Animus of the Quick? Or do we just play Root Seeds, which is also really good for the Animus of the Quick? The answer is Root Seeds. That Wilting Sapwood has been surprisingly good. I think it's going to, to dip off in usefulness once its health doesn't cause it to survive a couple waves, which I assume is going to happen. Well, we are definitely going to do Hidden Passage, so let's start there. That's a good place to start. You are dying. You're taking two damage from him. That's fine. At the bottom, we could play Awake. Awake would be nice. We should probably Vine Grasp this one to the front. Let's do that. Now both of those die. Let's play the Awake. And let's play two Root Seeds. That means we draw more next turn and we get that attack back. This is going so well, and I don't entirely understand. We drew Awake again. We don't really need it the second time. This one is dying quickly so that nothing is happening there. You are also going to die quickly. Nothing is happening there. I guess what we do is we... We bring you to the front because that means we'll quickly kill you. We're going to play a Sting. Any reason to play the Sting anywhere besides the bottom? No. So let's play it at the bottom. Do we play a Glimmer? I don't know. Let's play a Root Seeds first. See what we draw. We drew another Root Seeds. So let's do that. Do we want to play our Welder Helper? With the idea that we could Hidden Passage it in a future turn. I think we do. So we play the Welder Helper. That means we can Hidden Passage it later. We'll play a Queen's Impling in front of it so that it doesn't take damage to its armor. And then we do something down here. We do something down here, I guess. You're taking damage and then you're healing all of it. Maybe we play another Queen Zimpling in the center. No, I don't really want that either. There's no reason not to play Glimmer somewhere. Let's play the Glimmer at the top. All right. I just ran out of things that were useful to do. We can Hidden Passage, great. So what we're going to do is play this Welder Helper. That means you've got 40 armor, then we are going to Hidden Passage you. Now we just want to bring you to the front, which we will do with a Vine Grasp. No reason to Vine Grasp anything else. There we go. And we drew our Ritual of Battle, which is perfect for this unit back here. And then what? A Root Seeds, one Root Seeds. We have so much trash still in our deck. Our train stewards and queen zimplings. We keep drawing them and I don't want to draw them. All right. What do we do this turn? We could vine grasp you, but it does nothing to vine grasp you. So I guess we vine grasp you. We... We Root Seeds. There's nothing else to do other than doing Root Seeds a whole bunch of times. All right. I think we definitely win this battle. I think we definitely win this battle. 
And we have a whole bunch of Ember next turn, so even though we got that self-mutilation, we can just play it. And we can play the Wilting Sapwood again. Sure. Ritual of Battle up here. Vine Grasp. Do we want anything else in front? No. I like the order of our units. So Vine Grasp you. Sting you. Play Root Seeds on you. Most of this doesn't matter because we are going to win. Very easily at the top. Actually playing another unit gave us another self-mutilation, which was kind of bad. But we win. You only get to attack once. Can we make it so that you don't attack at all? No. You get to attack once. All right, you, you get to attack once. And then you die. Okay. Going rather well. Ramble Lash is not great because we don't have a way to get more thorns or more spikes. We have three spikes, that's it. Do we want preserved thorns so that we get more sting spells? I tend to like this card. Because you play it you play it the turn that you play it, you play three sting spells, that means you draw three extra next turn. So it's kind of like the invigorating solution, but you keep the stings in your deck. In fact, it's almost certainly better than invigorating solution. It's interesting to see these two right next to each other because the preserved thorns seems to be almost strictly better. Almost. Let's take it. Preserved Thorns. Tiresome Climb we could do. Inferno. Inferno is interesting. Inferno is interesting. Does that mean that I want it? I don't know. The reason that I think that Inferno is interesting is that we really only take up two floors for our units. We've got the bottom floor, we've got the top floor, and then the middle is just kind of a staging area for us to ascend units. So we could play Inferno on the middle floor a bunch of times. I'm willing to try it. I think that we've never played with Inferno. So just chalk up another card that we've never really interacted with before that we're going to do this time. And a familiar tent comes closer into view. The winged looks eager to see you behind its curtain. Hellborn, I'm surprised to see you back so soon, but I'm a wing of my word. Here you go, good as new. I even took the liberty of making it just a little better for you. Consider it a small way to begin apologizing for a long history of, uh, disagreements. I could, however, hold it onto it for a bit longer. Give it the old winged treatment. Ooh, we could have it stay longer? I mean, I don't, don't really like your upgrades to it that much, <laughs> honestly. You know, let's have him hold on to it a little bit longer. <laughs> I want to see. I will not disappoint you, Hellborn. I want to see how that goes. I want to see what the next upgrade is. All right. So removing cards from our deck seems really good. Another Concealed Caverns is not bad. Have we ever been to a Merchant of Magic? We haven't. We've been once, right? We've been once. I want to go to a Merchant of Magic sometime. I guess we'll do it next time. No, there's no Merchant of Magic there. That's a Merchant of Trinkets. <laughs> do we just never do a Merchant of Magic? It seems so strange. But I really want to remove two more cards. What does the duplicate do for us? We could duplicate Hidden Passage just to get it more often. I don't know if I like that.
I don't really want to duplicate Edge Prior because it has an Immortal Stone in it and you can only fit one on the bottom floor. What do we duplicate? We don't have a great duplicate target. Does that mean that we still go left because removing two is really what we want? It does. Let's go left. Let's look at the Divine Temple. There's a value stone here. I do like the value stone. Value stone could make Inferno cheap or it could make Ritual of Battle cheap. <laughs> Which one of those would we like to be cheap? Could also work on Awake. Granted. I don't know which one of those we want the most, but we do want one of those. The problem with putting it on Ritual of Battle is we never get to add a stack stone to it. Who cares? Let's make that cost zero. And now that we've made it cost zero, I'm pretty happy with duplicating it. Could do another engage pack, I don't want to. Could do a purge stone. We've got another temple and another temple and another temple. We've got plenty of temples. They will supply us with pack shards. Next, let's see what's in the concealed caverns. I don't recognize this one. Ember deposits. Oh. So we could get the abandoned stave. I don't think we've ever played with it. It gives us extra ember for every two blight cards in your deck, but we do get two vengeful shards. Because we start with dead weights, two dead weights, that means that it would give us two additional ember every turn but we would also have two additional Blight cards in the deck. I mean, doesn't seem that bad. The Calcified Ember I do like, but I think, I think let's continue doing new things. Let's continue doing things that I've never done, with be, done before this far into the game. Let's take it, Abandoned Stave. And now we have a bunch of Ember, which means we... I guess we take Herzl's Compound again next time. It's crazy, right? We've already done the Divine Temple, everything that I want to do here, which means let's remove two cards. I want to remove the Train Steward and one of these Queen Zimplings. That was an easy decision. Now let's duplicate the Ritual of Battle that costs zero. Great. And move on to the next battle. Are we going to continue to do well? I honestly have no idea. Non-boss enemy units enter with spikes four. Could be bad for us. That could actually be bad for us could actually also be good for us, is the thing. The Spikes 4 hurts our quick units. The quick units are supposed to not take damage, and they do if there's the Spikes 4 on enemy units. I'm really thinking about it, though, because our units tend to have a fair amount of health. Let's turn it on. I don't think this kills us. That's the main reason. I don't think it kills us. And if it doesn't kill us, it only makes us stronger. Now, we could ignore the Vengeful Shard. One of the things that we could do is play the Edge Prior, play Inferno, play Inferno first, and then Edge Prior, and then play Wildington at the top, and that's a good first turn. We could even use a Vine Grasp, even though that's pointless. Huh. We don't get to play Vengeful Shard, 
which means we take one damage. One damage is pretty insignificant. And would we rather just play the the Wilting Sapwood and have it take the damage? I think we might prefer it to take the damage. So if we'd prefer it to take the damage, I guess we just play it. And don't play Inferno. Which means we're playing Wildenton at the top. We can play... We don't want to hit one of these with Vine Grasp, so I guess we hit the back one with the Vine Grasp. This is going to draw us a card. That's the reason to play Vine Grasp. The Queen's Impling. You know, I don't mind playing the Queen's Impling and killing that one. Let's do that. We get less Ember next turn, but we don't take as much damage on our Wilting Sapwood. And then we also get to play the Vengeful Shard. And the Hidden Passage is pointless this turn. Pointless this turn. I do like seeing the Steelworker. Because I like seeing the Steelworker in front at the top. So let's play the Steelworker in front at the top. We could do the same thing as last time. Bring this Sycophant forward, kill it with a Queen's Impling. Or we could play Glimmer and kill most of them. We have a lot of Ember. I think the one that I care the least about playing is the Welder Helper right now. So if we're not playing the Welder Helper, Let's imagine that we're playing the other things. And that means playing a Glimmer at the bottom. They get a lot more attack. Then we play Queen's Impling. And we draw a Welder Helper. You know, I guess because we drew the Welder Helper, we play two Welder Helpers in the center. It's not my favorite, certainly, but we could do that right now. Get those two Welder Helpers out of the deck, basically. And then play Vine Grasp on you and Root Seeds on our champion, because it has Sweep. Okay, well, we have to figure out what to do with this unit that's going up, because we don't kill it quickly yet. We might kill it quickly after we play Animus of the of Will. Ooh, there's two of them that are upgraded this time. Don't like that. I don't think we do anything at the bottom this turn. Not even a Queen's Impling or a Vine Grasp. I think we play the Animus of the Will in the center and give it the Ritual of Battle. The main problem with that is it takes 12 damage from the Spikes 4. And we could avoid that if we could kill it more easily. But what are we going to do with the Animus of Will other than play it now? I'm not sure, but let's play the Preserved Thorns first. Preserved Thorns first, that gives me a card when we play two of them. We get a Root Seeds. Okay. So Animus of Will is going back here. We are going to Ritual of Battle it. You're only taking eight now because you kill him in two hits. That's kind of nice. You know, could we make that even less with a sting and two root seeds? No, we can't. <laughs> even if we played this vine grasp, we would be one short. Oh, wait a minute, you don't have quick. So actually, that does it. Now you only take four damage. How about that? Shall we play a queen's impling down at the bottom to get it out of the deck? I think we do. Even though I said we weren't going to do anything at the bottom, I figured out something I wanted to do.
Unfortunately, they have attack value now, which is not great for me. We did not draw our Ascend card. I really wanted to draw Hidden Passage this turn. We did draw Glimmer, however. Glimmer can take out the center. Which I think is more important than dealing with the bottom. So, Glimmer the center. That means you're taking another 4 damage because of that one. We're going to rage you a couple of times, make you have ridiculous amounts of attack. And then, what shall we do at the bottom? I think we play a Sting. I kind of want you to die. So, how are you dying right now? You take... You take two, four, six, and then you attack and take four. That doesn't cause you to die. How are you dying? Oh, right. When he when he attacks, he extinguishes. So he does two. This one does four, and this one does six. So if I play a queen's impling, you still die. And we deal some damage to this one. Oh no, you don't die. How did you not die? Because that one doesn't die anymore. Whoops. I did not like that. I made a mistake. Should have not done anything. Alright, well, anyway. Since we did what we did, we'll play a whole bunch of Root Seeds. I wanted to deal some damage to the front ones because they have so much spikes. But I did want this one to die, and it did not. We finally got our Hidden Passage, so we can do that. Hidden Passage, you. We need less cards in our deck so that we draw, we draw our cards more consistently. I think we want to play Inferno this turn, by the way. Inferno in the center, go. Boom. <laughs> Destroyed. We're going to play the Awake at the bottom. I will play one of the Root Seeds. And then a bunch of Stings so that we draw more cards. Oh, I forgot the... I should have played the Vengeful Shard. That was just a simple mistake. Okay. What can we do here? <laughs> we could play Inferno. <laughs> I mean... That would kill our unit, which means that we would draw it this turn. I like that. So we're going to play... The only problem is we don't get to play Vengeful Shard if I do this. I don't like that. Let me reconsider. So what I'm thinking of doing is playing, is playing the Inferno, which kills everything except for the boss, does 100 damage to the boss. Then playing Ritual of Battle, Ritual of Battle, Sting, that will cause me to draw the Wilting Sapwood from the Winged Steel. Except that that's not how Endless works, because... No, that, that is how Endless works, that's not how Holdover works. Right, okay, so this is how Endless works. So we would draw the Wilting Sapwood again, then we could play the Wilting Sapwood, and then it would die, and then we could play it next turn as well. The problem with that is we don't get to play Vengeful Shard. And if I think that we're winning, which I think we are, then let's not take the one damage. So we don't take the one damage. It would be kind of interesting to have you not give your attack value. So let's take you out of the picture. And, I mean, we don't even need to sting you because these guys will kill you quickly. Would we rather sting down here? I think we would. And then we Ritual of Battle, <laughs> Ritual of Battle, and Root Seeds. Okay. Our unit has 131 times 3 attack. I think that wins. 
think that wins no problem. Even though you've got sweep, which is scary, I think we win no problem. We're going to play the Wilting Sapwood again, of course. We're going to play both Vengeful Shards. We're going to play... Awake, I guess? Awake on you. The Root Seeds on you. The Stings right here. I could Hidden Passage this one. It's an option. I just don't see why I would want to. Wouldn't I rather it do damage this turn and give me more Ember next turn? I think I would. So. Stop there. Let's kill the boss next turn. So the boss has almost full health. However, it dies. It dies after dealing only two attack. Two attacks. Play the Vengeful Shard. Play the Ritual of Battle. Now it only gets one attack. Let's win. All right, we got a random artifact. We got Pyre Wall. Not my favorite. Would I rather have 25 gold? No, let's take the Pyre Wall. Restoring Retreat. We have an Ascend thing going, so Restoring Retreat kind of works against that. Right? I mean, it kind of does. I think we skip all of these. Skip these. Alloy of the Ancients applies 25 armor, which I think is quite nice. Important work, sacrifices an imp. We still have some imps. We still have... How many imps? Four, six imps? I don't know if we want it, though. Branding right... Applies armor 20. It basically does armor 15 to a unit. Since we have enough units with health that that works. It also works kind of well on... on the Wilting Sapwood because we get the revenge effect. Which just means more ember next turn. I don't really care for that unit to have armor 20 is the thing. So why why care about that? I think we'd rather have Alloy of the Ancients. Ho-ho, all right. Let's see what this unit looks like now. The Ramshackle Tent, now an oddly welcome surprise, comes into view. Safely inside, the Winged is patiently waiting for you. Well, it wasn't easy. Let me get, get that out of the way first. But this here is some of Heaven's finest work, if I'm being honest. And I am. So make sure this gets used in the right place. Seraph can smell an assault from rings away, but I think you just might have a chance. So, what does it look like? It has revenge apply attack to enemy units, or to all friendly units. You know, it is better. I don't really like it having the revenge effect. I kind of wish that we, we had taken the branding right now that I see what this looks like. The plus 30 health is pretty good, though. I mean, I'm taking it, for sure. We're not that different, you know? Just two tracks on the same rail. Let's hope we end up going to the same place. Best of luck, Hellborn. Seraph's gonna wish he'd never crossed the likes of us. All right, so I think that I mostly want to remove more cards. Removing more cards seems still pretty good. The Queen's Implings could go. We can also remove a Root Seeds. Could we remove the Vengeful Shards? I actually don't know if we can. It would mean that this gives us less Ember. It would give us only plus one Ember instead of two. But having two less vengeful shards in the deck would be amazing, right? I think we want to remove cards. I really want those free artifacts, but too bad. We're going to have a paid artifact instead. Can we remove the vengeful shards? We can. Let's remove them. And 
and that means that we have this only gives us one ember per turn it's basically a fell's remorse now i'm happy with that let's look at the merchant of trinkets those are fine but maybe not amazing let's look at the divine temple there's a true stone we really want to add that to this glimmer that makes that glimmer so much better let's do that the twin stone the twin stone what do we do with <laughs> nothing i think we still don't care for the twin stone it could go on alley of the ancients technically technically that's not bad i don't know it's not great though if we don't take that we have to get 25 more pack shards we've got two divine temples to do it in i think that's perfectly fine let's not take it which means what are we doing here the trader's quill is not terrible we've got two three consume cards it's not terrible but it's not good Pyrestone housing is good if if we're gonna use it which I really want to go to a merchant of magic sometime <laughs> are we going to go to a, that last merchant of magic and just go for every unstable vortex if we do we get another merchant of steel and getting another Merchant of Steel means that we could upgrade Animus of Will and the Husk Hermit and the Wilting Sapwood. That seems pretty nice. Let's take it. And this also means I don't want to buy anything else here because we really need the money. So let's not buy anything else. We're done there. Let's go into Fell the Wings of Light. Scouring Crest. That's not great, but honestly, the Winged Steel and the Herzl's Compound makes it not as bad, because drawing more cards means that the Scourge cards do less. Still, though, it's kind of bad. The Ultimate Penance. The Ultimate Penance is kind of bad. You know the inferno at the very beginning is pretty good it means the ultimate penance deals us five damage but the inferno is so good or do we just play husk hermit because the husk hermit takes that guy out <laughs> do we just play husk hermit it would mean that this one would deal damage do we play Wildenton at the bottom? No, we shouldn't play Wildenton at the bottom. We have an Ascend card in our deck. Okay, there's two ways that this could work. We have a Glimmer. What am I thinking? Let's just play the Glimmer. Yeah, let's just play the Glimmer. Okay. We play Glimmer. We play the Ultimate Penance. We play Wildenton at the top. This does mean we get less Ember next turn. That's fine. We play the Husk Hermit at the bottom. Even though we want it at the top with Wildington, we also want it at the bottom. So we're going to play it at the bottom. And then Vine Grasp and Sting. We really want to get rid of those Alabaster Guardians at the top and the bottom. That would make a big difference for us. So we got the Edge Prior. The Edge Prior Wilting Sapwood. That's good at the bottom. And we want it in front, of course. You have Sweep. Oh, you know what? You get. You have Revenge. I don't know when we're going to use that. Now that we put this in front of you. You both have Revenge abilities, though. 
I think we play the Animus of Will in the center and the Steelworker at the top. I think that's what we do. Steelworker could go... Both of those we want to do a hidden passage. Well, whichever one we play in the center, we want to do hidden passage. We want the Steelworker at the top because we want it in front. That's the reason to play Steelworker at the top. Oh no. We don't have Ember. That's so sad. I think we play Vine Grasp on you. I didn't actually think we could move it because the Alabaster Guardian has Immobile. We can only play one of these. I think we play the Steelworker. We want the Steelworker, definitely. We draw a dead weight. All right, we're gonna have to get back to our Animus of Will, and I really dislike that we have to get back to it. Oh well. What did that do? Oh, you added the ultimate penance to my deck. Got it. I really want to vine grasp you. We're we're gonna do that. Vine grasp you so that we don't get more weights of contritions. We play both the weight of contrition and the ultimate penance. Get them out of the deck. We've got a ritual of battle. It goes pretty well on the Husk Hermit. It also goes pretty well on Wildenton. Let's put it on the Husk Hermit. We, we definitely want the bottom to be removed more quickly. Alloy of the Ancients goes on our Steelworker. And then what? I do not know. These are the units that don't really matter in the deck. We could play the Welder Helper for a potential future. Or we could play a Queen Zimpling just to get it out of the deck. Let's play the Queen Zimpling, get it out of the deck. It deals one damage to that Alabaster Guardian. You go, Queen Zimpling. So there is our Hidden Passage. That is what makes me wish I had played the Welder Helper. Because we could have played this Welder Helper and the Hidden Passage. Right. It's kind of sad that we didn't do that. Oh well, we didn't do that. So what we're going to do is play the Welder Helper. And then Hidden Passage it as it is. The Ritual of Battle. I could do even more to the Husk Hermit. Don't mind that. Could do it on Wildenton as well. You know, you're kind of scary. How do we deal with you? I, I think we vine grasp you, and then we play preserved thorns. Deal you some damage. Play this ritual of battle on, on you still. We could play the Glimmer down here. The Glimmer is not bad down there. Let's play the Queen Zimpling here. Let's play Root Seeds on Wildenton. Worry about you next turn. I am worried about you next turn. We do have 15 armor on our Pyre. That's a positive for what's happening. I think we play the Glimmer down here because it, it does do some good things down here. It does 12 damage to both of those units, which is pretty good. And it heals our Wilting Sapwood. Yep, let's do it down here. I am worried about that unit, because we didn't get all of our attack value at the top that I'm used to having. We drew 10 cards. What are we going to do? I really want to deal you more damage. I think we start by playing Sting. Start with the Sting. 
we really want to see what we're going to draw. The Ritual of Battle... I think I am going to put it on Wildenton because I really want you to die. And then a Root Seeds on you as well. We drew a dead weight. Okay, whatever. Play the ultimate penance. You're going to deal damage to our Pyre. Those two are going to die from Wilt, from Wildenton. The damage to our Pyre is only going to go to armor, because it has 15 armor and it does 30 damage. So currently you're not dealing any real damage to the Pyre. That is kind of nice. I kind of wish this didn't have piercing because I would like to remove the spell shield, but oh well. The spell shield is the least important thing. Let's play three root seeds. One there, let's play the other two down here. Draw ten cards again next turn. I do like how often we draw ten cards. Oh right, Wildenton roots enemies. I'd forgotten about that part. So anything that gets up here, as long as it doesn't kill us, it eventually dies up here. Oh, that's great. Also, we got Hidden Passage with the Animus of Will. So we're going to do that. Animus of Will, Hidden Passage. We could also play Inferno in the center, which I kind of like. Do that. All those guys are dead. And we drew a Ritual of Battle, which we will put here. Three Stings, which we will do down here. And one Root Seeds. And then two Implings that we don't care about. That we would kind of prefer to remove from the deck. We have the ultimate penance to play. We will play that. Let's play the Ritual of Battle first. Ritual of Battle. Ultimate penance. See, we could Hidden Passage our Husk Kermit at this point. In hopes to get it all the way to the top before the... before Fell the Wings of Light gets there. I'm not against that. If we're going to do that, we should play Inferno first. And then the Hidden Passage. And then Sting and Root Seeds. Should we Sting the boss to get rid of the Spell Shield? I think we should. Let's do that. Get rid of the Spell Shield, finally. Root Seeds you. We're drawing plus nine next turn. We are not drawing all 10 because we didn't play tons of root seeds. But we get the vine grasp in our hand, so it's still 10 cards. In fact, if we, if we draw 10, we don't get the vine grasp. Good to know. Let's start with the ritual of battle here. Then we want to play Awake on our Wilting Sapwood. We could kill this one, but it's going to die anyway from the Husk Hermit. Play the Sting here. Well, do we care? We don't really care about playing Sting there. Okay, play the Sting down here. Play the Vine Grass down here. Draw a card. Play another Sting down here. Play the Welder Helper here so that you get more armor. Play Awake down here, and a Root Seeds at the top. That draws plus 9 again, which as we've just learned is actually the number we want to see at the bottom. This plus 9 is what we want to see, so we get our Vine Grasp. Ooh, we have not drawn the Ascend card yet. So putting you here did not help as much as I would hoped. Play the Ritual of Battle on you. Let's play 
You're dying quickly, so stings go here. We don't actually care about the Vine Grasp next turn, so that can be plus 10 and we'd be fine. Do we want to Vine Grasp you and play the Wilted Sapwood? I think we kind of do. Vine Grasp you, play Wilting Sapwood. Oh no, it takes up three space. I thought it took up two. <laughs> I guess that still allows us to play two Queen Zimplings. And then we could play Awake on something. It would give Regen three. I'm kind of upset that we're only dealing dealing 102 damage. And it remains so. We're going to deal more damage on the top four, but is it enough? I'm not sure if it's enough because the boss still has 1,200 health. Oh, it's it's enough. Apparently, apparently it's perfectly fine. I I apparently am doing much better than I think I'm doing. Especially after we play all these root seeds. So only the front one is is dying. All right. Well, I'm surprised at how well this deck is doing. Let's just continue to say that. <laughs> we do not want spreading spores. Definitely no. Unleash the Wildwood is something that I usually really like, and I don't think I want it in this deck. I don't think I want it. Which feels so weird. I always want that card. But I honestly don't want it this time, so skip. And we're at the point where another Herzl's Compound doesn't really help us. Which means it's either Fell's Remorse or Light of Seraph. Light of Seraph makes it a little bit easier to play things at the beginning. Sure. Light of Seraph. I don't know how much that really helps us. But it's something. Let's start with our champion upgrade. I honestly don't know what they are or what we would want. So the Strangler 2 just adds stats. Adding stats is not bad. 35 attack, 50 health. The Predator 2 adds multi-strike 1, however, which seems more important. Predator 2. Divine Temple, what do you have? Extreme Stone. We want that on Glimmer. The Glimmer that does not consume. It does 42 damage. I like that. And restores 42 health, which hasn't been incredibly important yet, but it's kind of nice. Do we want a Seek Stone? So the main thing to put Seek Stone on is probably Preserved Thorns. Or Inferno, for that matter, but probably Preserved Thorns. So that we start drawing a bunch of cards early. It might be useful. I'll have to think about it. In the meantime, let's remove two cards. So these Queen Zimplings are quite bad. And they're basically gumming up my deck. So, remove two Queen Zimplings. Get some Pyre Remains. Look at the Merchant of Steel. Large Stone. Ho oh, ho, we could put a large stone on Animus of Will. Ooh, I think I like that. I think I like that. Especially because we just added the Light of Seraph. And we don't really care about how large our units are for the most part. <laughs> Animus of Will getting the large stone. Would we want that on anything else? I mean, the Wilting Sapwood could use it, but I, I think I'd rather have the other Thornstone on the Wilting Sapwood. So let's add the large stone there. 
Let's add a thorn stone to the wilting sapwood, the one that wants to be attacked. Strength stone could go on steelworker. Fine. Or husk hermit. You know, goes on the husk hermit. And then we reroll. Frenzy stone. Frenzy stone could also go, go on husk hermit. All right. I like this. These upgrades have been amazing. Thornstone could go on Steelworker. It's a pretty good one for Steelworker. We usually put it in front. Doesn't have a whole lot of health though, but you know, <laughs> none of the other ones do, so whatever. And then the Strength Stone also goes there. Great. We have very much upgraded our units. That felt amazing. Do we do the Seek Stone? I think I want the Seek Stone on the Preserved Thorns. So that we start off drawing a bunch of cards. Okay, we've got 100 pack shards. I don't mind adding a few more, but only a few more. And we've got one more Divine Temple to add pack shards. All right, let's go into Battle 7 and see if we do well here. You have Trample. The Trample is bad for us. The 26 attack is bad for us. I don't know if we want Aggressive Amulet, especially with these Shade Wings. Yeah, I don't think we turn on Aggressive Amulet. I think we just press Fight. Okay. So you don't have quick, which means we can't really put you at the bottom. Maybe we just put you at the top then. I think what we do is we vine grasp this one so that we can kill it. Vine grasp this one, play the preserved thorns, kill this one. Then we play Wildenton and Husk Hermit at the top. So we've got two sweep units with Quick and Multi-Strike at the top. And then the Queen Zimpling can just die. Yeah, let's just have that die. So Wildenton and Husk Hermit. We would prefer the Husk Hermit to be in front. Yeah, Husk Hermit in front. And then Wildenton. And then we still have one space, which means we could add a Welder Helper in front. Fine. We might do that. And then we do the rest of our cards. So, Root Seeds on you, Sting on you, we're drawing 10 cards. The main problem is, do we deal 240 damage? And I think the answer might be no. We don't deal 240 damage. We also don't have an Ascend card in our hand, which is not great. We play you at the bottom. That's not a question. We want to play Ritual of Battle here. And then we play a Ritual of Battle here. We don't have an Ascend card, which means we can't really play these units. I mean, we could play the Animus of Will. We could play it. It would take 30 almost 45 damage, but it has 68 health. So we could play it in, in preparation for the Hidden Passage, which we are most likely getting next turn. Okay, let's do that. Taking 44 damage, which we don't like. We don't like that we didn't kill the Collector. But I think we have essentially set up as long as we draw our our 
card that ascends that unit. Which we didn't yet, but we do get one more draw. We also have Glimmer, which can kill this one that's dealing most of the damage. Let's start with the Wilted Sapwood, Wilting Sapwood at the bottom. Let's play... So you're dying, that's great. What else do we want to do? Really don't care about most of these cards. Let's play the Alloy of the Ancients on you. And then we have to play one more card before we draw something. I guess it's going to be Glimmer in the center. Okay, we did not draw our Hidden Passage, but we will draw it next turn. Which means we don't play Inferno. And what else does that mean? We could bring you to the front. Of all of the things that we want to bring to the front, it's you, so let's do that. Because you could get to the Pyre, who cares? I don't think you are getting to the Pyre, granted, but I, I don't care if you do. And let's Root Seeds you and Queen's Impling. Queen's Impling in the center so that we preserve some health on the Animus of the Watt, of the Will. And we're gaining lots of Ember every turn due to our, our Wilting Sapwood. The card that I really questioned whether we should ever play with has done wonderfully, honestly. In fact, I think I'm going to Glimmer down here, which I think kills it. Yeah, it does kill it, and then we get to play it again this turn. Let's do that. <laughs> oh. It did not kill it? Oh, because it healed our unit. Right. It heals it, and then it takes the damage. All right, well, never mind. That's not how that worked. We will ascend you. That is a definite. Do we play the Welder Helper first? Of course we do. We basically want the Welder Helper to be in the front. And then we Hidden Passage you. I noticed that we're going to have Ember Drain next turn because you didn't take any damage. Oh, you took damage twice. Never mind. We, we will have some Ember next turn. Let's play Awake. I don't know if I want it on the Wilting Sapwood or the Animus of Will. Let's play it on Animus of Will. And then Root Seeds you as well. Vine Grasp on you because I don't know what else to do with the Vine Grasp. Okay. I think we are all set up. Now it's just a matter of winning. Which I think we do, but I'm not completely sure. So I want to play the Steelworker, so that we could ascend it in a future turn. I think we sting this one. Or we could... we could Vine Grasp you and sting you. Kind of like that more. Vine Grasp you, sting you. We get another sting, so we still get to sting this one. Okay. And then Root Seeds. Root Seeds on you a couple of times. You only have 74 times 3 attack. Not as good as before. I liked how much you had before. We get a Respite. I don't like the Respite because you don't get any Ember for next turn on Respite. So we do get to Hidden Passage you, and I think we drew too many cards. Yeah, so we don't have we don't have the ability to bring you to the front. Either way, we Hidden Passage you. I think I want to bring you to the front next turn. It means that this one doesn't give you plus one attack, but it does mean that the Animus of Will gets to attack more often. So. I think it's all good. Speaking of Animus of Will, let's apply some Rage. 
Welder Helper, I think we play down here. Like that. Glimmer. Glimmer heals us. I guess we heal down here. Unless we don't care as much as playing Root Seeds. We are drawing plus 6 next turn. We want that to say plus 9. But no more than plus 9. So we want to play 1 Root Seeds. And then we don't play the other Root Seeds. Because we want to draw our Vine Grasp. Oh, right. You're taking six damage. <laughs> That's it. We can change that a little bit with this Glimmer. I will do that. I think. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of, of zero-cost cards in our hand. Let's play some zero-cost cards first. Zero-cost and... We're going to Glimmer down here. I guess we do that. And then we Sting. Ritual of Battle again. Let's do that right there. And Sting. I don't really care about the Vine Grasp next turn because we get to do this this turn. And that's basically the order that I want, I think. Unless we want the Husk Hermit to be in front. How important is the, is the Husk Hermit being in front? Not much because you deal 56 damage, <laughs> so the Husk Hermit being in front only activates a couple times. So let's not bother. We play... Therefore we play Root Seeds and Sting. Okay. The question is, how much damage do we deal the boss on the final floor? Because that's really the only question, is how much we deal on the final floor. We could ascend this Wilting Sapwood. We could do that. And we could even put it in the front if we wanted to next turn. As long as we don't play too many Root Seeds this turn. Sure. Let's Ascend you. It does mean that we're not getting a lot of Ember next turn. Which we don't care about. Okay. Let's get this to plus 9 and no further. Which means Root Seeds... I should do the Ascend. Root Seeds and Root Seeds. Okay. Now let's see how much damage we deal to the boss on this final floor. We are already winning. <laughs> we do so much damage. Alright. Well, we even got this the Welder Helper to survive. How about that? I think my deck is so much better than I imagined it is. But it's going really well. Ingraft is whatever. Edge Prior we don't want. Awake we don't want. I think we skip these. Battering Ram is fine. March of Shields gives us more ability to reorder things. That's... that's not bad. Plus the 10 armor is probably not bad either. Let's take a March of Shields. Now, we want to remove two more cards. We also would really like to go into one Merchant of Magic, I think. We don't really have anything else to do with a Merchant of Steel. So let's go to the right. Let's look at what's in the Merchant of Trinkets. The Thorn Casing is quite nice, but I don't think... Yeah, there's no way we afford it. Divine Temple. There's another Seek Stone. Don't really care about that. There's the Twin Stone, which I keep looking at and keep not caring about. 
Let's stay at 100 pack shards. So it's just these two. Merchant of Magic. Eternal Stone could get me the Alloy of the Ancients to stick around. Power Stone could go on the Glimmer that consumes itself or the Sting. Don't really care about it on Inferno. I think we might want to just reroll so that we have a chance of getting whatever this next one might be. Let's do that. Double stack. Double stack could go on March of Shields. That's not bad. It could also go on Alloy of the Ancients, but it has Consume. Oh, I just did that. <laughs> I, I clicked accidentally, actually, but fine. It, it gives 50 armor now. It was not a bad choice, it just wasn't the choice I intended to make. Now then, the Welder Helpers stay, the Queen Zimplings go. All right, final gauntlet. As usual, I don't feel amazing about this final gauntlet. I, my deck has been doing great, and I don't... I don't know if that's going to change. All right, the Prideful Emblem. We get to put Animus of Will and Wildington at the top on the first turn. That is nice. Let's do that. That means the Animus of Will gets as much time as possible to upgrade itself. The Glimmer can go at the bottom just to deal with those a little bit. Preserved Thorns, of course we play that so that we draw more cards. Do we want to remove the two damage shield? No, it's going to get removed by Wildenton. Yeah, don't really care. So let's just sting this one a few times. Because Wildenton has sweep, we don't care about killing that one. Let's vine grasp. We could vine grasp the boss so that we do 19 more damage. Let's kill this one. We don't really care about killing that one. It's totally going to die at the top. Let's find grasp the boss then. Do 19 more damage. And then March of Shields on Wildenton. Alright. Not a bad start. Not a bad start, I say. So we do get the Hidden Passage with the Steelworker. We haven't drawn our big fat unit to put at the bottom yet, but I... I think that's fine. I think we're doing really well anyway. So let's do the Steelworker and ascend it. What else do we do? Ritual of Battle here. We should probably sting at the bottom to get this one to have less health. Vine Grasp, it does not matter at all on anybody. Let's just do it on you. We've got one Ember to spend. I think we play a Root Seeds so that this Animus of Will gets stronger faster. Okay, there's some more cards. What I really want to do is play the Husk Hermit in the center so that it can be ascended later. But in order to do that... I mean, we could put the Wilting Sapwood in the center, you know? Put it in front. It would... It would not die. That would mean the Husk Hermit doesn't take damage this turn, and is primed to go to the top. Alright, let's do that. So you in the center, you go in the back, so that you can be sent to the top 
as soon as possible. You get 20 damage. How do you get 20 damage? You only hit once because you die. You only hit once. You... Oh, because you deal some damage. So if we reordered them, you would only take 10 damage. Let's do that. Reorder them so you only take 10. You took 30 now. <laughs> I did that wrong, apparently. Oh, because you're still in the back. It was better for you to be in the back. You know, mistakes were made. <laughs> mistakes were made. Let's play the rest of our units. Just in a normal way. In a less problematic way. Haas Kermit, I'm so sad for you. Took 30 damage. We do have a heal spell. Granted. And we do get the Hidden Passage right now. Alright, Hidden Passage you... All of those going to the top is probably fine. Do we do 130? We, we definitely do that, even with the gain armor 15. Okay. So do we play the Edge Prior at the bottom? Sure, Edge Prior at the bottom, that's where we want it to be. We can kill this one right now. Don't see the value in that. I think we just want to deal some damage to these. And this one. Play Awake on you so that you heal up. And Root Seeds on the Animus of Will. We do need to reorder these units, but we have ways to do that. And a little, little bit of damage to you. Welder Helper, don't think we care about you. Not particularly. We could play you and have you die, or we could save you for potential future plays. We have four units at the top, which means we can fit three more. One of those is going to be... I guess they could both be Welder Helpers. Okay, fine. Let's leave the Welder Helper for later. Just in case. Just in case we want to. Everything dies at the top, no problem, as is the usual way. The edge prior could go in the center because that prevents you from getting the harvest. And it still dies in the center. You don't take any damage. Oh, you restore 20 health when you slay something. Got it. We could deal a whole bunch of damage to Seraph by playing Glimmer right now. I think we do that. Play Glimmer. And then we're doing 86. That's less than I wanted. But Ritual of Battle makes it more. We could play another Glimmer. We could play that at the bottom, maybe? We want to play the March of Shields. So... The Husk Hermit being in front is better than anything else being in front. I think that's true. But we're going to draw March of Shields again, so... Who would we rather have? The Husk Hermit being in front is better than the Steelworker being in front. So let's put the, shield work, the Steelworker in front now so that the next time we draw that, we can put the Husk Hermit in front. Great. Now, what do we do with the rest of these cards? 
I honestly don't know. I'm having trouble with why do we have these cards? The root seeds are no problem. Root seeds we put on our times three unit. The stings we could play here. The glimmer we could play to get rid of it. I think we do. The welder helper we keep just in case. Just in case we actually do something with it. Eventually. Alright, the top... The top, everything is not dying. Ooh, you only have 5 times 2. Okay, so... If we do Ritual of Battle on... Wildenton... Then our units don't die at the top. You still get there, though. Don't like that. The fact that you have sapped my units is a lot more painful than I was expecting. Like, I've got 10 sap on this unit. How do we have 10 sap? I know that you sap units. How much do you sap them? You apparently sap them a lot more than I thought. Okay, well, you're going to get to the pyre. Because I think that we shouldn't do anything else to prevent that. I don't think so. I mean, we're going to play Stings. Let's play the Stings. Now you die. Okay, so never mind. You die just fine. You dying is fine. I think we should play the Inferno in the center. Let's do that. Are we going to play the Welder Helper this turn because there's a hidden passage right there? Sure. You don't get to keep a lot of your armor, but I think it's still fine. Alloy of the Ancients, do we put that... I think we actually finally play that. We're going to play it on you, because you have a really nice revenge ability, and we're going to put you in front later. Okay. That was a turn. Next turn. Stop sapping my units. I actually dislike it. More than I thought I would. What do we do? The idea is that we hidden passage you. So I guess we start there. Hidden Passage U. We've got both Vine Grasp and March of Shields. So we could put... We could put two of these things in front. Does the Welder Helper go in front first? I guess so. Welder Helper goes in front. And then... This one goes in front. And that's basically the order that we want. Where are we putting the edge prior, wilting sapwood? We kind of want it all over the place. The glimmer could do a lot of things at the bottom. Let's start there. Glimmer does a lot of things at the bottom. I guess we play it here. So that it does some damage to those two. Not a lot, granted. And then root seeds our times three unit. Yeah, let's keep doing that. Because at the end of the day, these these units going up are not the problem. The problem is Seraph. So we really want to be prepared for Seraph, which mainly involves that back unit being as big as possible. Okay, here's the Relentless phase. We've got Inferno in the pile. I think that means what we do is we play Ritual of Battle, Ritual of Battle first. And a Sting. 
Oh, we got Inferno. Great. So we play Inferno. Play Inferno here. And then we get to play Edge Prior. And the Welder Helper. Welder Helper is hard to know what to do with. I guess we play it here. Sure. And then Edge Prior goes at the bottom. We play a Sting. And two Root Seeds. The Edge Prior is there so that we get Ember next turn. Because it's going to be hit several times by Sarah. Let's start with our zero cost cards. So, Ritual of Battle goes here. Ritual of Battle goes here. Then what? Then we play Edge Prior in the center. And then we March of Shields our Edge Prior, I think. Because what else are we going to do usefully? Yeah, let's March of Shield, or sorry, Hidden Passage, the Edge Prior. And then March of Shields it, so that it's in front. And then we play the rest of these. Glimmer here. And then... Sting, Root Seeds, Root Seeds. All right, let's see if we do enough damage. We have done enough damage previous times, but you know, I'm always questioning it. Especially because Seraph does a lot of damage. Does 48 damage every attack. Seraph is dying. <laughs> Why is our deck so good? All right, click the end turn button. This deck is better than I think it is. Constantly better than I think it is. I'm fine with that, you know? I'm fine with that. One turn boss rush. And the last divinity. So the last divinity fight, I think we need to decide which floor we're setting up on. Because <laughs> we don't get the same... We don't get to do the same thing here. If we put it, everything at the top, then the sweep really removes our attack. We don't have enough health on every single unit to handle the sweep at the top. So I think we need everything to be in the center. Which is hard. That's a much harder thing to do than putting everything at the top. So... You are in the center. You're getting 14 damage every turn. Very bad. Do we put the Wilting Sapwood there? We technically could. Well, no, we can't. It doesn't fit. All right. Wilting Sapwood goes here. That takes out those two, which is very important. We are going to play the Preserved Thorns. I don't know if we want to add attack value to those guys. Because our our champion doesn't currently kill them. Ooh, we, we could Glimmer, though. Okay, that, that basically solves that problem. Glimmer down here. Now our champion does kill them quickly which means we don't care if we play spells down here. But also, we also don't care to play spells down there. So we play them here. It's sad not to play the Root Seeds, but honestly, we will have more Ember in future turns. You are wondering about death? I mean, makes sense. We drew all of our units. It's not what we want to see. I don't want to draw all the units right now. The Animus of Will can't be played except at the bottom. Which is not good because it would get hurt. 
Actually, we've got a glimmer to play down there. Okay, so let's start by playing glimmer at the bottom. That will that will help me decide other things. So the Husk Hermit is perfectly fine going in front right here. Perfectly fine. That's actually really nice. The Animus of Will, we could put at the bottom. We will draw Hidden Passage rather soon. It means we're not playing the Steelworker yet. Because we just can't play that many units. But I think we play the Husk Hermit. It gets to use its revenge ability twice every turn. Which seems pretty good. Animus of Will goes here. We get the March of Shields. I like putting that there. Survive longer, please. Every time we play a spell down here, you are going to get more armor. How much does that bother me? How much does that bother me? Currently, we're not killing you in the center. If we do Ritual of Battle twice... I want to do Ritual of Battle twice. And now you're, we're dealing you a bunch of damage. Okay, that's good. Sting can be played at the top, as well as the Vine Grasp. Why are you not taking any damage? It says, it says zero, but shouldn't you take two damage from the spikes? I don't know why you're taking zero. Why are you taking zero? Oh, because you restore five health. Right. I forgot that we added that effect to you. <laughs> it's been so long. I think I want to Root Seeds our champion so that we can deal sweep damage more effectively in the center. And then Vine Grasp could go on anybody and it would be fine. I think we just Vine Grasp the boss. Because I don't care about Vine Grasping you. So Vine Grasp the boss. Steelworker, we will deal with you later. As long as we keep drawing 9 or 10 cards every turn, we'll get back to the Steelworker in no time. Okay. We have the Hidden Passage. Let's start there. Hidden Passage U. That's a good start. We certainly want the Alloy of the Ancients on U. That costs two ember. Does that bother me? No. Let's do it now so that we do it. We want to wake on you. We want these units to die. <laughs> I mean, in some senses they will in the center, probably, but we could play Inferno. I don't think I'm going to play Inferno. Do we play Welder Helper? We could play two Welder Helpers at the bottom. Take some of the hits. I'm thinking about it. If we Vine Grasp somebody, we Vine Grasp you. Vine Grasp you. And then we drew a Sting. How perfect. So now we can sting you. It does add 15 armor, but that was going to happen anyway. I want to play the Awake. Let's play the Awake. We're going to want to play the Awake in future as well. How much do we want to play these Root Seeds on our Sweep units versus our times 3? I think we want some more... Some more attack on the sweep units. Okay, well that's it. The Wilting Sapwood dies, we get to play it again next. 
The real question is, do these units die? Because we have a lot of sweep damage, but maybe not enough. We don't have enough, and you're taking a lot of damage because of that. Don't like that. The Steelworker can be ascended this turn, though. That's quite nice. Let's start with that. The Steelworker gets ascended. You're taking 39. I mean, it's actually a little bit more, but you're adding 5 armor. Is there anything we can do to change that? I don't know if we can, but we've got the Vine Grasp, which means it's it's possible we can. And I would like to think about how we might be able to. We've got the Glimmer next turn. Glimmer is good next turn. Let's play the Wilting Sapwood next. Ritual of Battle. So that one's nice. Ritual of Battle means that we could we could put that on our champion. Now we're dealing a lot more to everybody. I think our sweep units are killing everything except these two. And then you are dealing a whole bunch of damage to that one. So I don't think I want to change the order of these units. I guess you're... We could move you to the front. I don't think that helps. I think we just do what's good for our units, which is Root Seeds on you a couple of times. Root Seeds on you a couple of times, and then... You might make it to the Pyre, I'm not sure. Stinging you is kind of pointless, because of all the sweep damage we have. So let's... Let's change the order of these units. And sting this one. Alright, we still have some armor on our... on our Husk Hermit. The Husk Hermit that has revenge, that gives everybody attack. It's kind of a nice Husk Hermit. The Husk Hermit is... Oh yeah, I forgot about the rooted. <laughs> the rooted might be bad for us sometimes. Like it's keeping it's keeping the discipled inquisitor around. The march of the shields is nice, especially because we could put the welder helper at the bottom and then bring it up and then march of shields it in the front. But we do have glimmer as well. We might want to do glimmer at the bottom. I think we do want to do Glimmer at the bottom. Let's do Glimmer at the bottom. Let's do more Ritual of Battle on our times 3 unit. More Ritual of Battle on our times 3 unit. You're taking a lot of damage, but you're not dying. This is the wrong turn for Awake. Let's do a March of Shields on you. Yeah. I still want you to be in front. We might put somebody else in front soon. Root Seeds there, Root Seeds there. Root Seeds there. Should we play the Sting? If we play the Sting, we don't get the Vine Grass. And the Vine Grass might be important because we might want to put somebody else in front other than this Husk Hermit, temporarily. I think, I think we don't play the Sting. And we do play Welder Helper. Welder Helper so we can ascend it in a future turn. And we rooted, we rooted the Discipled Inquisitor, which is not bad because of all of our sweep. Right. 
We could play Inferno at the bottom. And still be able to play the Wilting Sapwood again. I think we might do that. You're taking 9 damage. That is from the last Divinity. 14 from the last Divinity minus the 5 from Steelworker. Alright. Do we Hidden Passage you first? Or do we Hidden Passage this one? <laughs> let's, let's not worry about this Welder Helper. Let's do an Inferno at the bottom. Kill everything. I mean, actually didn't kill much, to be fair. And then we play this Welder Helper. And we ascend it. And then we play the Wilting Sapwood again. You guys don't have enough health to get past my sweep units. So no reason to take you out. You're adding Ember Drain, but he's adding Ember, so counteracted. Haha. -ha. How much how many cards do we want to draw next turn? That's the next question. I think we want to draw all ten. I don't know if we can currently, but we're going to try. We can. Do we play the stings here? No, don't care. Play the stings at the top. Just deal damage directly to the last divinity. Alright, four waves remaining. We are dealing damage to the last divinity every single turn. So we might be winning this one handily. We might be. The fact that you have 600 health is a problem. That is a problem. Everything's dying there. We can play Awake on you. I really like that. I'm considering playing Inferno at the bottom again. I don't know if I want to. Let's play the March of Shields here. So that you go in the front. And that's temporary. We're going to put the Husk Hermit in front later. But for right now, you take some damage. Ritual of Battle on you, of course. We could play the Inferno at the top and just deal 100 damage to the boss. You know, that might be better than Root Seeds. Sure. And then deal 30 more damage to you, the Steel Slate. The Steel Slate is the biggest problem because of the Spikes 5. That hurts. That's going to hurt every unit, especially the ones with multi-strike. But we are dealing another 600 damage to the boss, so the boss is going down. Kind of fast. So this Glimmer is a great thing to play at the bottom. Let's start with the Glimmer at the bottom. Glimmer at the bottom, take those guys out. You are dying. You are dying because... because of the 10, 14, and 5. 10, 14, and 5, that does kill you. Do I care about you dying? I'm not sure. One of the things that we could do is play Edge Prior at the bottom, and then Ascend it, and then Vine Grasp it. And I am definitely considering that. I like it. Let's do it. Edge Prior at the bottom. Hidden Passage. And then Vine Grass to put it in front. Wonderful. Ritual of Battle on our, our big times three unit. Now we're killing the Steel Slate this turn. That's great. I guess we play Root Seeds. And I, I do want to keep doing it on you, yes. I actually want some more... Let's put some more attack on our Sweep Units as well. The Sweep Units having more attack means they kill more things on their own. 
and then sting you a couple times. Great. We got Inferno to play at the bottom. <laughs> Alright, let's play Inferno at the bottom. That's a great start to this turn. We can play Awake on our Wilting Sapwood. I think that's quite good. I think that's quite good. And then a Ritual of Battle on our times 3 unit. March of Shields to put... I think we want our Husk Hermit in front again. Do we want the Husk Hermit in front again? Or do we want the Ember? We want we want the Husk Hermit in front. March of Shields to put Husk Hermit in front for the revenge ability that it has. And then sting the boss a couple times. And I think we're winning. I think we're winning. I mean, next turn is the is the final turn, but I think we're winning handily. How about that? We're winning, none of our units are dying. We have lost one Welder Helper. That was one of the best, one of the best last Divinity Battles that I've had. And this was the highest Covenant rank I've ever been. I think that has gone very well. All right, another Divine Victory under the belt, a new Covenant rank unlocked. I'm rather happy with that. And it does give another victory to the Hellhorned, which the Hellhorned is one of the ones that has the least number of victories, so I'm happy to do that too. Covenant rank 23, heavy enemy units have increased health. Oh, that's annoying. So I imagine that the heavy enemy units are like the Disciple Protector, the, the ones that have the shield and sit in front. Them having increased health is bad. Usually they don't have attack, if I'm thinking of the correct units. And that's, that's quite bad. Not what I was expecting. And we Divinity Mastered four more cards. Also, special thanks to the Edge Prior, who we sacrificed and did not get the Divinity Stamp, but maybe we will get it for him later. There's still one card that we haven't seen. Yeah, there's still one card that we haven't seen. It's very weird to me that there's still a card we have not seen. But there it is. I I will see that card at some point, I'm sure. Quick applied 27, our previous best was 23. I think that's always going to be with Wildenton, where you get the quick applied. And a 52,000 score is actually pretty decent considering how many times we won at the top floor. We did take four trials. And I want to mention that I've noticed that our best runs, the runs that win, tend to take more trials. And I don't know what is the cause and what's the effect there. Is it because the run is going so well that I take more trials? Or is it because I take more trials that the run goes well? Not sure. Anyway. I guess we're going to do another Covenant rank next time. I achieved a new Divine Win this run. I now have Divine Wins with over two-thirds of the clan combinations. I also Divinity Mastered four more cards. I now have over 200 Divinity Mastered cards. And all four were mastered for the first time as well. On the right, I am happy to announce that I've registered 100 kills against the Disciple Protector, where I stop counting. Goodbye, Disciple Protector. You have been checked off my list. I'm also featuring his boss, the Discipled Inquisitor. 
He was the only boss to make it to my pyre this run, and I did take a fair amount of damage in that battle. On the left, I'm featuring the Wilting Sapwood, which I had never played with before. My strategy with it was interesting and quite effective, taking out the low health units and giving me a surprising amount of ember. I'm also featuring Animus of Will, my big damage dealer this run. She consistently dealt hundreds or thousands of damage to bosses, safely behind many other units. For artifacts, I am featuring the Abandoned Stave, which I had never played with before. Due to our Covenant rank forcing two deadweights in my deck, the Abandoned Stave gave me Ember even after I removed the Vengeful Shards that came with it. And the Light of Seraph becomes the third artifact slash enhancement to reach my 100 battle threshold, making space for units on my train. Check out my tracking sheet for even more information, link in the video description. New episodes every Saturday, and thanks for watching.